in their secrets. And their secrets all lie within Kabbalism. Now, Kabbalism is an ancient Hebrew mysticism. And it has been actually passed down from the Egyptians and probably back to Atlantis. But we have it at least from the Egyptians through the Hebrews and up till the Freemasons. And it is admitted 70 times in Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike that Freemasonry is Kabbalism. So as we start to look into the numerology, what we're looking at is a tree of life. And this is something that the magicians use and what I believe to be a map of the uh, extra dimension. So as you're looking into this map, there are 10 spots on it, and they are called the Sephiroth. And within these Sephiroth, you have your trinity at the top. So this is, this is the all, the one, looking at itself and creating a reflection. It's the one, two, three, and that's why one, two, and three are all still one. And then four is the first emanation into reality. And then we come down where six becomes Jesus. And as we're looking at this numerology, you go up from the bottom up to the top, you have ten points. Ten being God. Ten being the hermaphroditic symbol. One and zero. And you're going to find these constant hermaphroditic symbols, uh, Hermes and Aphrodite. You'll constantly find these everywhere. That's what the target sun sign is. It's the hermaphroditic symbol. That's what the compass and square is. They're, they're, they're sexual symbols. The point within the circle is, is a hermaphroditic symbol. So as you come up to 10, that is their god. That is 10. That is the hermaphrodite. But if you stop at 9 and you skip to 11, skipping god, then you are a Luciferian. Because uh-huh. 11 is the number of the magician. It's the one step above. Once you have accomplished the tree of life, you are now the magician. You are one above 10. But they're doing it by skipping God. My turn to drive? Give me the page. What are you talking about? Jump from page 9 to page 11. Where's page 10? It's got to be a typo. What are you talking about? Jump from page 9 to page 11. Where's page 10? My name is Glenn Moore and I'm the director of Jubilee Countdown Ministries. I have a website where I present my views on Bible prophecy, end time events, and the current occult deception. It is called itsaboutthattime.net. Now we could talk about Bible prophecy or end time events here, but for now I wish to focus on the occult agenda. Here I want to talk to you in more detail about the occult connection to 9-11. When the towers fell on 9-11, the towers were on fire from about two-thirds of the way from the bottom, and because of the smoke from the fires, people could be seen jumping from the towers. This theme is not new, but instead can be traced back to the occult. In tarot cards, which are derived from the occult, there is a card often labeled with the number 16 called the tower. On that card we find that the tower is often broken at the top and on fire. We also find people jumping from the tower to their certain deaths below. Again, this is not a new concept, but comes directly from the occult, just as the numbers 9 and 11 directly come from the occult. Now as we look more closely at the number 11, we find that it is, along with the number 13, one of the most powerful occult numbers in existence. Great events take place in conjunction with the number 11. This happens because the ruling elite plan it to happen that way. When we look over historical events, we see that the number 11 is very prominent in many of those events. From the occultist point of view, the number 11 can be used to line up a certain event in three primary ways. One, the 11th day of any given month. Two, the 29th day of any given month, which would be 2 plus 9 equals 11. Or three, when the sum total of a given date adds up to 11, as in 9-11. 9 plus 1 plus 1 equals 11. Whether it is a stock crash, a terror attack, the start of a war, or even a supposedly natural disaster, the number 11 is very often prominent. 
On 9-11-2001 in New York, here we see occult numerology at its finest. When looking at the Twin Towers from a distance, they appear to be very similar to the number 11. Each building had 110 stories, which leaves 11 when the zeros are taken out. Both buildings together give the number 11, 11. September 11 is the 254th day of the year. 2 plus 5 plus 4 equals 11. As mentioned before, the date of the attack includes 11, not only with the day of the month, but with the addition of those often repeated numbers together. 9 plus 1 plus 1 equals 11. The first plane to hit the towers was Flight 11. The state of New York was the 11th state added to the Union. The third building to fall had 47 stories. 4 plus 7 equals 11. It took 11 years to build the World Trade Center. Groundbreaking and construction on the Pentagon took place on 9-11-1941. Other great events taking place on the 11th in history? The train bombing in Madrid, Spain took place on 3-11-2004. The total number of deaths from that were 191. 1 plus 9 plus 1 equals 11. Exactly seven years to the day, Japan suffers greatly because of a huge 9.0 earthquake, followed by a great tsunami and nuclear accident at Fukushima. That was 3-11-2011. World War I ended on 11-11-1918 at exactly 11 a.m. Germany and Italy declare war on the United States on exactly 12 11, 1941. Let's bring it up to modern times. The unprovoked attack on the Davidian compound took place on 4-19-1993. 4 plus 1 plus 9 plus 1 plus 9 plus 9 plus 3 equals 36. 3 plus 6 equals 9 which shows the number 9 as prominent. The Oklahoma City bombing happened on 4-1995. 4 plus 1 plus 9 plus 1 plus 9 plus 9 plus 5 equals 38. 3 plus 8 equals 11, which shows the number 11 as prominent. When you combine these two events, Waco and Oklahoma City, based on their numbers, you come up with 9 and 11. Significant events will also happen on the 29th day of a month, for example. The Great Depression started with a stock market crash in 1929. The date of the crash was 10-29-1929. Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans on 8-29-2005. Just to let you know, I'm not an occultist or a numerologist. I'm actually a Bible researcher primarily, but my research extends into other areas including history, politics, and social activism. The reason that this is of interest to me is because in my quest to uncover the true causes of suffering in this world, I've come to realize that there is a conspiracy so huge, so pervasive, so subtle, and so evil that it is very difficult for people in general to take it all in and absorb it into their thinking process. The conspiracy is so huge that when the average person stands right in front of it, all they can see is a big toenail. They often fail to discern that a giant is towering over them even when that giant starts dropping things on them. One of the reasons that people are unable to grab hold of these truths is that they naively believe that their leaders could not possibly be so evil as to kill their own people, especially the innocent. The powers that be know this about human nature, so they use this to their advantage whenever they plan a false flag event. They come to you in sheep's clothing and pretend to be your saviors, when in fact they are the cause of many, many of your problems. The simple truth is that in order for people to rise to any significant level of power in government, 
they have to be totally debased to the point that they would do anything, no matter how horrible, in order to stay in power. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, but whenever someone comes to power with genuine desires to help the people, they are first bribed into corruption, if possible, and then their sins in office are held against them whenever they want certain draconian legislation to be passed. But if that doesn't work, they are often isolated, contained, ridiculed, and sometimes even secretly murdered. This happens in all nations and in all government agencies from the federal down to the state and local level. The United States is no exception and in fact it happens quite frequently here also. The reason we rarely hear of such activities is because it is done in secret and even if the facts become exposed, the mainline media has already been bought and sold by corporate controlled government. They will never give you the straight truth. In the big corporations, especially those which contract directly with the government, they routinely educate their employees and associates in their false ethics through classes that teach them about their system of specialized ethics. But any ethics that tramples upon the rights of others, whether overtly or subtly, is still evil. We live in a world that is built upon lies while giving the appearance of being true, right, and fair. It is a world of deception, and the 9-11 event was a great milestone in their efforts to continue the deception. However, the spell is wearing off, and they will have to do something else, even more grand than 9-11, in order to bring the people back into slavery to their evil desires. That great final deception is coming soon. I'm Glenn Moore, and if you are still listening to this, then I want to commend you. It may be that the spell has been broken. Can you see how 9-11 was a great deception to bring you and much of the world into more slavery? You don't really believe that 19 Islamic terrorists commanded planes and brought them into the World Trade Centers, do you? You don't believe that they actually did this and got away with it through the greatest defense system in the world? It's time to be free of the deception. If you can, then please share this information with others so that they too can be set free.